Street photography can sound simple. Just grab a camera, head out, and wait for those special moments to happen. However, in reality, it's actually one of the more challenging forms of photography. So in this video, I'm gonna share a couple of tips to make street photography easier for you. If you're new to this channel, my name is Aaron. I'm a photographer from London, UK. And on this channel, I talk all things street photography. If you do find this video useful, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing as well. Also, at the end of the episode, I've included one bonus tip, which I think is really important. So make sure you stick around for that one. All right, so my first tip is to use your environment to add layers of interest to your photographs. So what do I mean by this? You can use reflections in windows or puddles, shoot through transparent surfaces, add a foreground element or frame your subject. There are endless ways to make your street photos look more interesting. And more importantly, when you get into a habit of taking photos in this way, it makes street photography more interesting. Rather than just chasing after interesting looking subjects, street photography becomes more about using your subject to create interesting looking photos. And it's that change of mindset which is going to help you take your street photography to the next level. So just to wrap up this point, when you're out there doing street photography, get a bit more creative, add more layers of interest to your images, use your environment, use puddles, shoot through windows, reflections, frame your subject and that way you are going to take more interesting creative looking street photos. So next up this one's going to sound pretty obvious but it's a mistake I used to always make and it's to make sure that your camera is always up near your face ready to shoot. Now I've lost count of the amount of times where I missed a shot because I've had the camera hanging around my neck or it's been across my side or I've just been holding it in my hand down by my side near my waist. And by the time it's taken me to reach down, pull the camera up to my eye and take the photo, the moment has gone. A major key when it comes to being successful in street photography is always being ready to shoot. You don't wanna have your camera down by your side or something interesting happens in front of your eyes and by the time, as I said, you pick up your camera, it's gone. Timing is everything in street photography and fractions of a second can make a huge difference. So these days when I'm out doing street photography, I try to keep my camera up by my face and when I see something interesting, it just takes a fraction of a second to move the camera in front of my eye and take that shot. One of the most well-known street photographers in the world, Joe Merowitz, he uses this technique. And if you've ever seen footage of him shooting in a documentary, you'll see that he always holds his camera up to his face while he's out doing street photography. And this is for the reason I was talking about, where if he sees something, it just takes a fraction of a second to move that camera to his face. Whereas if he was down by his side, by the time he's picked that camera up, the moment may have passed him by. When it comes to street photography, smaller is better. So smaller lenses and smaller camera bodies. This is because as a street photographer, you're gonna wanna avoid disrupting the scene as much as possible and you wanna be as discreet as possible. Now naturally, if you're walking around with a gigantic DSLR with a big zoom lens on the front, you're gonna be far more noticeable and people are gonna spot you a mile off. Whereas if you're shooting with a Ricoh GR3 or an X-Pro2, you're gonna be far less noticeable. With smaller, more discreet gear, you're gonna be able to capture the streets in a more natural manner because less people are gonna see you coming and you're just gonna disrupt the scene a lot less compared to using larger gear. In my experience, the less noticed you are while doing street photography, the better photos you're gonna get. Remember, blending into the surroundings is the name of the game when it comes to street photography. All right, so next up, 
be mentally prepared for street photography before you head out to shoot. And this is really important because you may not have that many hours in a week to go out to do street photography. Due to work or other commitments, you may only be able to get out to do photography maybe two, three hours in a week or two, three days of a week. And for the limited time you have, you really have to make the most of it. And a good way to do that is to be mentally prepared before you go out to shoot. Now, there's been times where I've gone out to shoot, spent seven, eight hours, you know, doing street photography, and I come back with nothing. And there's been other days where I head out for an hour and I come back with four or five images, which I absolutely love. Now, the main difference between those two days is how I mentally prepare to do photography that day. A lot of your success in street photography is gonna be down to the mindset you leave your house with before you even take a shot. So something I like to do before heading out to do some street photography is to open a couple of my favorite photography books. I'll read through those in the morning, get some inspiration and head out that way. Or I'll go onto YouTube, find a few clips from a film I really like the look of and get inspired that way. Or if I'm pushed for time, I'll just go into Instagram and I'll check out some of my favorite photographers and get inspired that way. The main thing here is before you've taken any photos that day, is to be fully focused on photography. So before heading out, be inspired, be focused on photography, and in turn, you're gonna take better photos, and more importantly, you're gonna make better use of your time out there. Okay, so on to the fifth and final tip in this video, is to use interesting times of the day, or better yet, interesting weather conditions to add layers of interest to your photographs. Now a good way to explain this point is, take a look at these images on screen at the moment. These were all taken in central London on the heavy snowfall, but without the snow, this image isn't nearly as interesting. Same for this image here, taken early morning, foggy conditions, but without the fog, this image doesn't look nearly as good. And this is a tactic used by professional photographers all the time. This is why they're shooting in the early morning or in the evening during golden hour, or they head out in the early morning to catch that fog, or they go out when it's raining or snowing. I mean, some of my favorite photos were taken under torrential rainfall or in the early morning when it's been really foggy. So getting back to the point, making the effort to shoot during these times and conditions is gonna to translate to you taking more interesting and impactful photos. All right, so before wrapping up this episode, I'm gonna briefly talk about something which is pretty important to me. Let's just call it a bonus tip, but it's to enjoy the process of photography rather than focusing on the end result. When it comes to street photography or photography in general, we can all fall into the habit of worrying about the end result. We're thinking about the likes it's gonna get, is it gonna get many comments, is it gonna be shared around and so on. And what ends up happening is, we start shooting for other people rather than shooting for ourselves. Now I've been guilty of this in the past myself where I've headed out and just look to take photos of things which I thought would do well on social media. But the thing is, after a while, I found that I was losing interest in photography. And that was because I was always focused on the end result and I wasn't focusing on enjoying photography and taking photos of things I wanted to shoot. However, over time, I learned to enjoy the process of photography more than worrying about the end result because the end result is something which is completely out of our hands. We have no say over how your image is gonna be received, how many likes it's gonna get, how many times it's gonna be commented on, if it's gonna be shared or anything. The only thing we can really control is if we enjoy taking photos. So rather than worrying about the end result, by focusing on just enjoying photography, I became a better photographer. So next time you go out to shoot, try keep that in your mind. Don't be out there just shooting for social media or shooting for other people. Enjoy the process, enjoy your day out shooting. Enjoy the fact that you've got a camera and you're capturing the streets and you're creating cool looking art 
because that's far more important in the long run than how an image performs on Instagram or if it gets a lot of retweets on Twitter. And most importantly of all, just make sure you're having fun when you're doing street photography. So that wraps up today's episode. If you have any street photography tips of your own, please drop them down in the comments below. Or if you have any street photography questions for me, again, drop them down below and I'll make sure to get back to you. A huge thanks for watching this episode. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this episode, hit that like button. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.